Welcome back. Hope you had a great day today. Middle of the week already. A very special program tonight, as is always the case when one of America's and the world's most brilliant scientists, John Bedini, joins us for a conversation. John's been a friend for years. I wish I could call him a colleague, but I'm not in his class. This man is uh, truly a genius in the best sense of the word, and I'm not just blowing smoke. Those of you who have heard our programs before understand full well what I'm talking about, and I hope you'll go back in the archives and try and take them in if you possibly can. We're going to talk tonight with John Bedini about probably, well, I, in my estimation, and I'll just speak frankly without question, the greatest medical scientific genius of the last century and maybe of the last couple centuries and maybe beyond that. And his name, of course, is Royal Raymond Wright. That's R-I-F-E. Now, just imagine, if you would, for a moment, everyone out there, just imagine this. You've spent more than two decades in painfully laborious research in your in your own little laboratory and that you have finally discovered an incredibly simple electronic approach to curing literally every infectious disease on the planet caused by viruses and bacteria and other microorganisms. Indeed, this would be a discovery that the world would hail you as uh, the man or the woman who had ended pain and suffering of countless millions and changed the lives on the planet uh, Earth forever, right? Certainly the medical community would rush to embrace you with every imaginable accolade and financial reward that you could think of. That would be what you would expect, wouldn't it? Well, unfortunately, and as I said earlier, arguably the greatest medical genius in all of recorded history suffered a fate literally the opposite of the foregoing logical scenario. In fact, of course, the history of what they call modern medicine is replete with stories of genius betrayed by backward thought and jealousy, but most pathetically by greed and money. Same old story. Well, here with us tonight to talk about Royal Raymond Rife and his uh, absolutely astonishing genius is another wizard, my friend John Bedini. Welcome back, John. Hi, Jeff. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's great to have you back on the program again, uh, as, good to be as back. always. Uh, this man, to this day, continues to be... I'll bet if we asked 100 Americans on the street, less than one out of 100 would know who Rife is. Or That's correct. would even admit ever having heard his name. That's correct. Uh, probably the most important man in modern medicine... And yet no Americans know who he is. It is a it is a natural story for a magnificent Hollywood motion picture, a motion picture that should have been made decades ago but may never be made or at least may not be made for a long time. And if it is made, good luck on distribution because it would literally shake to the very foundations the, uh, the original Rockefeller uh, medical pharmaceutical cartel that uh, set up business in the last part of the uh, 18th, well, the 19th century, and then right on through the 20th, and continues to dominate us to this day, uh, cutting, slashing, burning, and poisoning Americans and people around the world in uncountable numbers. Uh, Royal Rife, had he been able to prevail with his genius, we wouldn't see hardly any illness at all today, and I guess that's maybe oversimplifying it, but not too much, is it, John? That's, that's correct. Very unique in what he did. Um, let's see. Do you have the internet site up there, Jeff? Jeff? I do. Yes. And for all of you who are online, please go to rents.com and make sure you hit reload if you're not fresh on the page and look for the guests section at the top of the page, and uh, you'll click. There's a link there. It'll go right to John Bedini's page. If it's not there yet, it will be in just a moment. So keep mm -hmm. refreshing the page. Um, He's got a very special page set up. Uh, about Rife and his work, which we'll be going through tonight. Go ahead, John. Yeah, what I wanted to explain to uh, everybody is this this work entails about 22 years of research. And the, uh, the research was conducted at my lab, at my own expense, uh, with all the equipment and everything. Of course, Crane was part of this at the time, and so was uh, Dr. Robert Strecker. And... Uh, we, Dr. Strecker and myself and a, a team of people, what we really wanted to know was, you 
know, was this whole story true? So, we, if we uh, can, John, excuse me. I want to just spend a minute and honor another uh, brilliant medical mind, and that's Dr. Robert Strecker. Right. Uh, Bob Strecker and his brother uh, Ted. Uh, were really the first people to step forward, and will you tell the story what they what they told the world about HIV/AIDS? Oh yeah, Doctor Strucker. And let me just give a little background about how I met Doctor Strucker. Sort of a funny story. Um, I was with a partner in my company, and uh, we had this Russian friend who had was doing jewelry over in a shop like about uh, ten miles away from us. And so I just went with him one day, and I was sitting in there, and, uh, and, and something popped up on the radio, and it said AIDS, you know, right away. The government was right there with the AIDS thing, you know, about be careful what you do here. And, oh, yeah. I, says, and, I, and I just blurted out out of nowhere. I said, I'll bet you they created it. That was the first thing that came right off the top of my head. And a little voice from the background says, you're absolutely right. That's exactly how I heard it. And that was Robert Strecker. And he, he where, where, where were you when this happened? <laughs> I was visiting. I went off to a machine shop to get a to, to get a die made to cut the tops off these transistors because I was working on these transistors. And uh, that's Strecker's actual voice. I, I learned to. Uh, to sort of sound just like him, you know, in the, in what he blurted out. But I said, I'll bet that the government made that. And he <laughs> said, you're absolutely right. That's very funny. <laughs> so That's a very funny I introduction. I started talking to him. Yeah. And he started to explain about how they took the Vizina virus and the uh, bovine leukemia virus, and they put all this together. And here's, I'm just a... Uh, you know, scientific engineer, a research engineer, right? And I'm sitting there and I'm listening and listening. And listen, this guy just terrorized me. He's awesome. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was one of the best when it came to uh, culturing out these these little critters. I mean, we, Doctor Strucker and myself, and a few others, of course. Gary, my brother, and you know Gary, Gary once in a while writes an email here sure. and there. But um, Gary sort of just stood off in the background, and he listened to the whole story. But Strucker didn't just come over, you know, and start blurting out stuff. Dr. Strucker had a suitcase full of information where he could show you point blank yep. what was going on, you know. And, and he said, he said to me, that, uh, you know, they killed my brother. And I'm going, what? And he goes, you know, they killed my brother. He said, we got so close, and he, and he ne you know, he knew that something happened. But, of course, he didn't let that stop him on his research work. That's one thing about Dr. Strecker. I mean, Dr. Strecker, when he started on a project, he wasn't about to give up. No. On anything that he was doing. And he's a brilliant guy. When it comes to culturing this thing, these things out, I had. Uh...